I'm Ethan Rosniak. I'm Luke Duffy, and today we talked to Mountain Vista English teacher Jason Fisher about the online teaching experience. I've taught uh, English and creative writing at Vista now for about eight, this is my eighth year. So what was your reasoning for going all online, and will you be returning to Vista? It was probably April or May. The first reason and main reason we, we filled out like a, a request to maybe go online was my daughter. So she's, she's going to be eight. And she has she has viral induced asthma, um, which basically just means that she gets asthmatic consequences, I guess, when, especially when getting a, vi a virus, especially a respiratory virus. She's kind of had that, but she's done a lot better in the last three, four years. But we just we didn't know much about COVID. This was probably April, May. So it was more like, you know what, I'll put in the request. If I get it, I'll stay home. If I don't get it, I'll go in. That was kind of my mindset. And this was before we met with her pulmonary specialist and things like that. Once we met with her pulmonary, actually, we felt a little bit better. Like she, people with asthmatics were doing really good with the virus. And obviously, we've learned that kids are doing pretty good. We didn't have that much fear. And actually, I was already back at work for almost a week. And then they told me I got the request. Then they told me you got your, your request was granted which i pretty sure they said because they needed people to be quite frank they needed teachers online because they have a lot of kids 10 percent of the kids roughly about six thousand kids k-12 chose to stay home here i am at this point i kind of and then part of it part of it was like you know what i do really well with routine and slowly starting to get one with this work versus i knew what vista would be going through which is what they're going through now like the rug getting pulled from under them and i just figured like you know what i'll just stay home like we'll just we'll just lock it in for a semester and see what happens. The other part, I have no idea at semester what um, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what they'll do. I don't know if they'll they'll make me stay, quote unquote, make me stay. Like they'll need me to stay because I'm grooving with these kids and rock and rocking and rolling. Or I'll have the choice. I have no idea if that will be the case. Are you teaching that online with your students currently? I'm not really instructing. I'm more of a monitor, but I am a content expert for them, meaning like if they need English help, they I'm on the list that they could ask me direct questions about that. And I am grading the English stuff inside this program they're working in. So I still am grading some English and then occasionally we'll give them you know, feedback on it. If it needs need some love, I'll, I'll let them know why and I'll send those and press save. Another question is, uh, how does virtual learning impact the relationships you're used to building with your students? I mean, I thrive off jacking around with kids, talking about golf, you know, doing human interaction. It's been a struggle for me. I'm an extrovert for sure. And I know that it's been a struggle for the kid. But yeah, the dynamic is completely opposite. I, I'm trying to meet with them once a week starting this Friday. And we've met like one other time. And I've met with individual kids and individual parents. But yeah, the human interaction part is really non-existent. So unless they are really good about self-advocating, and unless they're super good about, you know, emailing me and following up with me and asking questions, they're they're likely going to pretty much be doing things on their own. You, you guys will know, you know, as a kid, that's not going to be that fun, not going to be that engaging, definitely probably not going to feel fully rewarding. And I would imagine also feel kind of lonely, I guess. So yeah, it's been definitely a different animal. And I'm speaking for the kids at some level, but also for me, like, okay, it's great. I have some time, extra time with my kids. I have a little extra time. Anything you do to like try to make it more fun and interesting for them? So, I mean, to be honest, there's nothing that I can really do when it comes to their actual content and learning because I can't do anything in that inside the program to make them go forward. So the only thing that I can do is I can help. So I've off I offer that help. If a kid fails a quiz, if a kid fails a quiz uh, twice, then I will, you know, I might send them a couple screenshots of the two, three questions you missed because they, the program will like not give them the exact same questions, but I can at least say like, hey, here's what you missed. I added two retakes, like take your time, try to get try to get it done, you know, because again, they're not having that direct feedback that kids get in the classroom. So can you talk about your transition from going to Vista then online? It's been a little hard, but that's mostly because of the second biggest thing was Edgenuity, this program that we're working in. I got my login like three days prior to the kids starting. Like I didn't know what the hell I was doing. So for two weeks, I was trying to figure it out. Like the, every single question I got, I fielded was like, well, I think I, I think this is the answer. I, everything. I think, I think, I think this is what they're telling me for today. So I felt kind of, you know, a little unequipped. It was annoying. And so as I learned the program a little bit, then I started figuring out, oh, I can do attendance reports. I can do progress reports. I can, I can send emails to the kids. I can create a group. You know, it took like two and a half weeks just to do that. So two, three weeks in, I could create progress reports. I could let kids know, like, hey, you're not doing your stuff. So now 
now we have at least the ability to say, you know, you're behind. Um, do you need help? Or you have an F in, in math and it looks like you're putting time in. So like, what's going on? So you could at least see it, but I still have 60 kids and then all those kids have more or less five to seven classes. So it's still a ton of stuff in front of me that I feel like I'm juggling. But so, yeah, I think the biggest thing was learning the program and its limits and its, you know, capabilities. Do you have any pro, big pros and cons? Obviously cons are going to be just the fact that we don't have live instruction. Kids aren't able to receive, you know, human feedback right right away, especially in the classroom. You usually you can kind of, well, and, and oh, and they don't have the same teacher. So in, inside the program, often the videos are like, uh, their teachers, but it's a different teacher every unit or whatever, it switches up. So there's not a lot of continuity there for them. So cons would be, yeah, they don't have that human interaction. They don't have the same teacher. Obviously don't kind of have that human element of, hey man, it looks like you're struggling. Can I help you? I try to provide that, but it's still limited. They have to, it's autonomous. They have to do it on their own, you know? So if they are in a self-starter, that's a big con. This is gonna, this is gonna be a struggle bus for them to get going and work. So the, all those are cons. And then the pros, obviously, the kids are home. Um, there's a lot of families that, family dynamics, why they chose to be home. You know, I've, I've heard different stories from different families. So, you know, if, if mom is going through chemo or, you know, dad has this particular disease or whatever, like they're home and they're safe. So obviously that's a big benefit. Number two is the autonomous part can be a benefit. Some kids love that, right? Like some kids are, probably working from 7 p.m. to 12 midnight and just rocking and then sleeping in and getting up, having lunch, breakfast, lunch, and, and hanging out for a little bit, and then they get going. So there's probably pros to the kids' schedule being autonomous too. 